So we're going to take an approach to gratitude this morning that's a little bit counterintuitive. We are going to start with the opposite of gratitude, and we're going to sort of sit with that and see how that feels, and then we're going to build and grow from that into a, an embrace of gratitude. There's this episode on The Simpsons. Who, who here watches The Simpsons? All right. In which the whole family, Homer and Marge, Bart, Lisa, and Maggie, sit down around the table for a nice holiday meal. Homer turns to Bart and asks him to say grace before the meal. Bart puts his hands together, bows his head, and says, Dear God, we paid for all this food ourselves. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Imagine that. Imagine that for just a second. You've got parents, sisters and brothers, a, a family dog under the table. Thanks for nothing. You've got food on the table and a roof over your head. Thanks for nothing. You've got that skateboard, Bart. Thanks for nothing. In fancy academic theology, there is a term called apophatic theology or negative theology, and it is a way of approaching how we think about God. And, and in negative theology, apophatic theology, the discipline of approaching God, the spiritual discipline of approaching the idea of God is to begin to think about all the things that God is not. And so inspired by Bart Simpson, I'd like us to do an experiment and see if that via negativa can't give us some understanding of gratitude. So let's do a little bit of an exercise together, play a game. I want you to imagine with me a world without gratitude. Imagine a world without gratitude. Hard to imagine. And so to help us know what we're not supposed to be grateful for, I want you to give me some examples of things that that normally you are grateful for. Does anybody have an example of something that they're normally grateful for? Yes. Your family. Ooh. Yeah, what? Your friends. Okay. Anybody got anything Anything else? We'll see. In the, yeah. The. Flowers. Hmm. Hmm. And let's see here. Looking around, we'll see about, yeah. Food. Okay. Okay. And we'll do one more. Yourself. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So we're going to put our hands down now. We're going to... So I suppose if we... I suppose if we tried really, really, really hard, we could decide not to be grateful for those things, I suppose. We could say, well, well, our, our family, it's their job to... It's their job to love us. We don't need to be thankful for that. And our, our friends, well... Well, I give as much to them as they give to me, so it's a, it's a fair deal. And food, well, well, I paid for that food myself. Myself? I think you stumped me over there. <laughs> Suppose if we tried really, really hard, we could decide not to be grateful. But I want to turn the question a little bit. Has anybody ever here not been thanked for something that they've done? done something and not gotten any thanks for it. Wow, look at those hands go up here. We're going we're gonna to try. Let's see here. Donna, I saw your hand. Let's, what, a, what have you been not thanked for? Oh, cleaning and not being thanked. Yeah? Yeah? You build Legos for your brother and he doesn't thank you. All right, we're going to do... Let's see here. We have one, one, one on this, one on this side. Has anyone ever done something and not been thanked for it? Bob, what? Oh, <laughs> financially, financially supported your children. <laughs> A thankless task indeed. So here is the, here is the thing. How? How would we feel if, if someone said to us, well, 
well, that's just, uh, that's just what you're supposed to do. Or that's just, that's nothing to thank you. You're just supposed to be a good big sister or whatnot. Huh. Huh. It's easier to, uh, it's easier to sort of be ungrateful when, when it's yourself that's grateful for something, but it's, it's a lot more different when someone else says to you, no thanks for that. No thanks for that. Hmm. So next time someone says to you, thanks for nothing. Imagine where that's coming from. That's our first reflection on gratitude this morning. I have a second reflection to share with you about approaching gratitude by considering the opposite of gratitude. In the city where I used to live, there was a special Sunday at a church down the street from from my house. The minister of that church gave a sermon about complaining. He told the members of his church that they complained too much. And he told them also that they complained too much about insignificant things, about the, about the hymns that he chose and the informal dress code at the Saturday night service. Then he told them that complaining was bad for them, bad for their spiritual health, their emotional health, their physical health, their relationships. And then he passed out purple bracelets. Purple bracelets with the words, a complaint-free world, etched into them. And he challenged everyone in his church to go three weeks without complaining. And if they did mess up and they uttered a complaint within those three weeks, then they had to start over, back from the beginning. What do you think the reaction to the sermon was? (laughs) Well, it's interesting. They loved it. They loved it. They embraced the message without complaint. His sermon made the local news, the national news, then the international news. He was a guest on Oprah and the Today Show. And for a donation, his church will send you your very own anti-complaining bracelet. To date, they have distributed more than 10 million complaint-free world bracelets. I can only imagine the profit they made from that. (laughs) Certainly nothing to complain about. On Wednesday morning, I was thinking about what I could say about the opposite of gratitude, and I remembered this purple bracelet and went, went digging through my box of trinkets uh, to see if it had survived the move here, and it had. After that minister down the street delivered his anti-complaining sermon, people bought bracelets for their churches, their workplaces, their classes, their, their relatives. I received a handful of bracelets from members of my church who hoped that I might give it to complainers in my congregation. (laughs) There were inevitably some people who grumbled at this minister's advocacy of non-grumbling. For example, psychologist Barbara Held, author of the book Stop Smiling, Start Kvetching, (laughs) joked that she was considering selling her own It's Okay to Complain bracelet. If you're not familiar with the word kvetching, it is a Yiddish word, meaning to complain or to moan. Professor Held, who has a a personal quirk, um, if you ask her how she's doing, her response to that is always the same. It is, I hate everything. She writes... How are you doing? I hate everything. (laughs) That's a little little personal quirk. Writes about kvetching. Kvetching can help you deal with your problems, bear them, and survive them. The main purpose of kvetching is to unburden yourself. Most people have had the experience of telling their problems to someone else and having a sense of relief afterward. 
You probably have said to yourself or heard someone else say, you know, it's good to get that off my chest. If you have, you know the feeling of relief that kvetching can bring. Barbara Held is not the only one, by the way. A few years ago, I got an email out of the blue from someone named Guy Winch. Winch is a psychologist, author, and uh, writer for Psychology Today. Uh, he wrote to tell me that he followed my blog and that he really liked the sermons I, I posted there and read them frequently for inspiration. Um, we became Facebook friends, and um, I, I discovered about Winch that one of his areas of focus one of his areas of focus for his, for his research in psychology is on effective complaining. Guy Winch is the author of The Squeaky Wheel, Complaining the Right Way. Winch says that complaining when it's done wrong can function as a kind of learned helplessness. It can be an exercise in disempowerment. But he says that when done right, complaining can be a way to get results in life. Your squeaking, if it's done right, can get the grease. But you just have to follow the rules of complaining. One of Guy Winch's rules for complaining is to complain to the right person. Complain to the right person, he says. Your complaint will never be satisfied if it is directed to a person who cannot do anything about it. Another rule Winch suggests is to complain without emotion. Don't complain while you're angry, irritated, or frustrated. He says that effective complaining only comes from people who have regulated their own emotions. Interestingly. And finally, Guy Winch introduces the idea, his, his sort of central idea, the idea of the complaint sandwich. He says that you always, you can't just give a complaint, you need to give a complaint sandwich. He quotes Mark Twain as saying, I think a compliment ought to always precede a complaint where one is possible because it softens the resentment and ensures for the complaint a courteous and gentle reception. Winch recommends sandwiching your complaints between thick, thick slices of gratitude. Thus, the irony. If you are not at least twice as skilled at being grateful, than you are at being critical. You are not good at being critical at all. To be an effective complainer, you must first and most importantly know how to be generous with your thanks. Good morning. Tom asked me to say a few words on how to be grateful when you're really not feeling it. Something you might not know about me is that I'm a very pessimistic person. Secretly, I think everything is going to be a huge disaster. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm so nervous about the day I can barely get out of bed. I walk into the dining room and I say, I hate everything. Everything is going to be terrible today. Everything. And my husband, Ken, always says to me, really? <laughs> everything? You hate everything? Everything is going to be terrible? And I say, humph. Well, probably not everything. And then I say grumpily to him, why are you such an optimist? And he shrugs, not an optimist, just a realist. Mostly things turn out okay. Then he gives me a hug. We have probably had that exact conversation 100 times. One of the reasons I love Ken is that he's so sensible and calm, even when I am a bundle of grumpy, nervous feelings. People are often surprised when I tell them that really on the inside, I'm bracing for disaster. I have to fight negative feelings every day, and the main way I stay positive is gratitude, finding things to be grateful for. A couple of years ago, I read about some research that says if you write down three things each day that you are thankful for right before you go to sleep, you will be happier and more positive pretty much right away. 
Gratitude chases worry and negative feelings away. After I read that, I tried very hard to notice things to be grateful for every day. And it really works. If you are grateful, then somehow you are happier, braver, kinder, and a more positive person. And it turns out you can be thankful for anything, big things or small things. In fact, is it, it is easier to start out being grateful for small things. For example, I don't start out by being thankful for having plenty of food or thankful that I'm not starving because that is so big. I don't even know what it feels like to be really hungry, so it's hard to understand what it means to be starving. Instead, I start out being grateful for just one food, like an avocado, or for my husband's homemade mashed potatoes. Just thinking about it fills me with a rush of gratitude. When I'm really nervous, I think about a song I like, like, for example, Let's Stay Together by Al Green, or Mary, Don't You Weep by Aretha Franklin. It's just a small thing, but when I start being thankful for Aretha Franklin or Al Green's voice, then I can start shaking off nervous bad feelings. At the end of my street, there is a farm and several large hay fields right before I turn onto Smith Level Road. And every morning, the light, the clouds, the trees around the field are different and amazing. Every morning I stop, and I'm just thankful for how beautiful it is. My kids think I'm a little crazy when I'm driving them to school, because almost every day at exactly the same spot I say, wow, isn't the sky beautiful? Like it's a brand new thing. This is what I have found. If you start being thankful for a few easy things, it gets easier to feel gratitude for all the great big things about our world. And it makes it easier to work to make it an even better world. Thank you. Thank you, Marion.